Huge shout out to my supporting patrons and Fine Tool partners. I couldn't do it without you. Thanks a lot. So you ready for a learning experience? <laughs> this is the first time I've ever attempted this joint. Castle joints, or the three-way joint as it's sometimes known, is a very common joint used in high-end coffee tables, end tables, or even dining tables where the apron meets the leg. But I'm going to attempt this joint for the first time ever, and I have plans to use it in a project build video that will be in two weeks in a way that I've never seen it used before. So not only am I attempting, attempting a joint for the first time ever, but I'm going to use it in a project in such a way that's never been done, at least to my knowledge. So that is what we're going to attempt. And it looks good on the surface, but if I zoom in, it, you just won't want to know what is wrong with it. <laughs> but we're going to get started on making this for the very first time. So if this is your first time here in these kind of videos or what you like, be sure and hit that subscribe button that you see there and click that notification bell. It'll notify you whenever I post new content. Don't forget to comment down below. I'd appreciate it. So let's get to it. All right, I'm first gonna start with the turret. Uh, it basically is going to be the foundation for all these cuts that I gotta make. So I'm going to cut out a three quarter inch groove this way and a three quarter inch groove that way using one single blade. And I'm going to implement my half lap method that I've done on prior videos to get this thing nice and centered. So um, being that this is a two inch square, taking out the three quarter inch groove that I need to make, that leaves me with five eighths on either, either side. I'm gonna undercut it a little bit so I can sneak up on the measurement. That way, if I have multiples of these that I have to cut, then I can batch cut everything out and then just clear out the centers after that. All right, so using my mag shims and the red pieces, they are five eight, or excuse me, they are an eight inch thick and I've got five of them. And they're magnetized so they stick right to my blade, right up against the teeth. So I'll take this piece as just a straight edge guide, put it right up against the mag shim, backed up to my fence, and then push my block right up against it, which will give me that 5 8 of an inch overhang on either side that I want. So all I have to do is make a pass, flip this edge for edge, and then make another pass. So I'll set up my stop block to keep that in place. I just need to set up the blade height, which just needs to barely poke over the board there. That'll give me some sanding room after I get this laid in place. Okay, now that the curves have been made, all I need to do is just kind of clear out the centers and leave the four turrets. All right, so there is the battlement looking top of the castle joint and if I set the three quarter inch piece in it fits nice now the cool part about this is that this doesn't exactly have to be three quarters of an inch thick because the way that we're going to make these will uh, actually there'll be uh, some grooves cut that will be matched to fit this uh, so you can get it as close as you want you can even get it as thin as you want. I went ahead and just decided to go with three quarters of an inch thick so it would fit. All right, so instead of doing the traditional half lap castle joint like they would be like this and then crisscrossed over to where they you know, fit like that, I'm actually going to have to make it with this one laid down, but the thickness of the board like this. So it's the width that I'm needing to accommodate, but I have to lay this piece down flat because that's how it's going to appear on uh, my next project. So, all right, so what I've done is I've put a couple of pin lines on here. They're not exact, but they resemble the thickness of this board right here. What I am going to do with this half lap method is by sticking this piece in between my stop block and the stock that I'm fixing to cut, it essentially ensures after I make my first cut and take this out and slide this over, that it's going to be the exact thickness of the piece that's going to intersect it. However, if you notice at the pin marks, Whenever I have this board in place, it's cutting on this side of the blade. Now, if I take this out and slide it over, the pin mark is still on this side of the blade, which is going to overcut by the width of the blade on this side. So the joint will be useless after that, and I'll have to either redo it or fill it or do something. So what I'll have to do is take an eighth inch spacer, 
because it's the same thickness as a full kerf blade. Now, if you use a thin kerf blade, this method will have to be adjusted by whatever your blade thickness is. That's the spacer thickness you'll have to use. So put it in between the stop block, and then it will push the line back over to this side of the blade so it won't overcut. And it will be the exact width of the board that you're working with. So to get the height established just right, you need to lower the blade at least below the thickness or half thickness of the board. I'm going to get it established right over the blade just to take a tiny bit off. I'll run it through, flip it over, and then run it through again. Any part that's left, I just need to raise the blade up to catch that part, but you got to make sure that you flip it edge for edge or face for face like this to remove that section. Once you completely remove it off, you've got the thickness set halfway and you don't need to touch a thing after that. You can start cutting your half lats. Okay, with the joints made to fit that, now it's time to match the turret. Okay, so here's the setup. I trimmed this down because I determined that I would like to have a uh, half inch overhang from where this turret intersects. So, this is going to be the exact opposite of how we did a minute ago. So I'm basically taking the board from this position and rotating it 90 degrees to that position. And instead of cutting the width of, or the thickness of the board, we're cutting the width. So the distance between this block right here and the blade curve is the half inch. It will start cutting right after that. We'll take this out, put an eighth inch spacer in, which will give me the width of this board. We need to set the blade up five eighths of an inch, which will leave me with three quarters of an inch in the middle, which will give me this, and we'll go around the four little battlement pieces that you see of that castle joint. So there it is, the three-way castle joint made in a flat, kind of horizontal position. So I gotta admit, this joint didn't quite turn out the way I thought it would, but that's the point of this video series is to experiment and try something new that I've never done before and learn some lessons along the way. And if you have a project build that you want to attempt a certain joint, attempt it on some scrap first and see how good you can get it. And that's exactly what I did here and you guys got to come along for the ride. So I'm here to admit this was not good. It was a little loose. I had to do some filling to make it look halfway presentable with lacquer under on top of it. So um, like I said, I learned some lessons and I'm gonna implement those in my next build video. And I'm gonna use this in a way that I've never seen done on a project and it will be in this configuration. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure and hit that like button. Click the subscribe and turn on the notifications. Leave me a comment down below if there's a, a tip or suggestion that you wanna give me uh, on how I need to go about accomplishing this. So I'll probably use the dado stack next time and make it a little easier on myself. <laughs> so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you on the next build. Be sure and check out uh, prior videos right over here and hit the subscribe circle in the center. See ya, boom!